Chelsea have already beaten Crystal Palace in the Premier League this season, but that was before the revival in Palace's fortunes, which saw manager Steve Koppel win the Barclays Manager of the Month award for December. Well, tonight's game was in doubt right up to the kickoff. Torrential rain in South London picking up the story at Selhurst Park is Brian Moore. Well, it's still a very dirty night here in South London. Indeed, the referee only passed the pitch fit at 7.30, half an hour before the scheduled start. And that's after hours of torrential rain. There's still a lot of water on the surface. It's a night made for drama and for mistakes. It could be some cup time. The team news, Palace manager Steve Coppels faced an injury crisis. The latest to the list are Simon Osborne injured at Hartlepool and Richard Shaw, a rib injury in training. Chris Armstrong, his main striker, is cup tied, of course. Simon Roger moves to left back. George Ender, who's only 18, and 19-year-old Grant Watts, with little experience but great promise, team up in attack. Chelsea, meantime, restore Mick Hartford to their attack alongside Robert Fleck. Once more, they'll be looking to Andy Townsend to control things in the midfield. And in defence, there's a change where Steve Clark gets his first start since September. Gareth Hall is suspended. And Dennis Wise is missing. A training accident has damaged foot ligaments. He reckons he'll be out for a fortnight. Andy Myers replaces him in the number 11 shirt. Our referee tonight is Gerald Ashby from Worcester. So Crystal Palace in the red and blue attack the goal to our left, get this it promises to be a really exciting cup tie in difficult conditions with the financial stakes really high, the winners go into the semi-finals, money spinners over two legs, live on television two teams here in good form this is uh, Kevin Hitchcock, the Chelsea goalkeeper Palace with six successive wins until that hiccup in the cup at Hartlepool Chelsea unbeaten in the last ten Myers in for Dennis Wise might get a shot but hits it well wide but certainly in these conditions shots from any direction and from any distance are worth a try the ball will really skate off this surface Simon Roger him on the ball now a lad sign from Bodna Regis whipping the cross in will it come still for Palace? No it's belted away by David Lee again for Chelsea up to Fleck terrific atmosphere here at Selhurst Park Barry playing it wide McGoldrick getting it through here's Barry again knocking it forwards again it comes for Bobby Barry of the Palace youngsters Goldrick there for Crystal Palace. All is kept in play very skillfully there by McGoldrick, knocking it long and forward. And easy for Sinclair to knock it back and so oh, can held up. Exactly it's in. Only just. And it's Chris Coleman. Well, Sinclair's back pass look like reaching Hitchcock it was a dangerous thing to do on this surface he tried to knock it wide all he did was knock it into a pool in comes Coleman and in fact you'll find the ball gets held up and barely crosses the Chelsea line it's spinning it's spinning and just goes over the line and Palace are in the lead four minutes gone Chris Coleman the scorer for Crystal Palace Here's Young. He shrugged away the thought of uh, passing back to the goalkeeper, having seen what happened to Chelsea. And really, to be fair, it's a bad night. It's a dangerous night for any sort of pass back. Andy Townsend was telling me before the start that, uh, that Chelsea didn't really want to play if it was going to be a lottery. Well, it took just four minutes for it to become just that. see what Chelsea can make it. Big David Lee knocking it forward to Fleck. Fleck trying to get away from his man. Stewart. 
Eldrick battling to get it away. Newton doing well for Chelsea there. Fleck knocking it in again towards Harford. Myers was in there as well. And a great save by Martin from Graham Stewart. And Chelsea so close to getting that equaliser. Will he pass back again? No, he won't that time. But well, that was some superb goalkeeping there by Nigel Martin. Full of action here. Here's young Grant Watts. Stopped by uh, Sinclair. Let's look again. A header there by Graham Stewart. Superbly pushed away by Martin. kick for Chelsea Coleman has gone back to mark David Lee it's Steve Clark then with the free kick for Chelsea got plenty forward Harford is an obvious target for this one and Lee is in there too the big lanky defender he's hit it really long towards him and uh, he's got it away well it's a lottery in there though in the end the flag was up for an offside I suspect against uh, Graham Stewart on this side of the field so Nigel Martin again he was the first one million pound goalkeeper good jump again by Sinclair not much of him Frank Sinclair five foot eight but does a really good job at the centre of the defence for Chelsea except when it comes to back passes on the wet nights at Selhurst Park quarter of an hour gone Crystal Palace leading by a goal to nil Clark playing it in again towards Harford but Young got there with great determination first Donaghy with a shot well that would have been uh, one for the collectors well Donaghy's never scored for Chelsea never scored for Manchester United his last goal was in that period at Luton and that finished in 1988 Coleman jumping Chelsea territorially looking uh, the brighter of the two sides it's Palace still who've got this lead here's Townsend whipping them up through that midfield Stewart back to Clark Townsend again Floating it to the far side towards Myers. Not in a way, but not very well. Flex getting in there. He's got Newton available to him. Myers available to him. And Townsend. So Chelsea continue to make the running. Roger to Coleman to Thomas 
Watts on the far side, Humphrey coming up, but headed away very comfortably by Donaghy. This is Bobby Barry. Still a first year pro. I'd say the Palace youngsters are beginning to bloom here under Steve Coppel. And the season really hadn't started well, it was a huge gamble. Really it came off for him in those games against Liverpool with youngsters like Bobby Barry and George Ender, and, uh, Grant Watts and so on. Barry's header. Chip fall by Myers. kick for Chelsea for uh, Crystal Palace. Looking towards Colin Eric Young's in there too. And Ford tries to get in there. And it's over the line and the goal is given. George Ender. Chelsea looked hard at the linesman wondering if the ball had gone out of play. But it's George Ender. With his first goal for Crystal Palace has restored the lead for the home side. Just kept in play. It was touch and go though, and finished off by Endar. So little in it, as Andy Thorne knocks it back in. And the number seven, Endar, the ball just crossing the line, but that's enough for Palace, and they lead 2 1. Oh, there's problems down below. Robert Fleck seems to have been involved, Jeff Thomas seems to have been involved. Way off the ball there, and the referee wants to have a look at... Certainly wants to have a word with Jeff Thomas, the, the Crystal Palace captain. Andy Townsend there as well, the two captains. I'll have a look at that in a, in a moment. It's yellow card for both Townsend. In the situation now. Townsend going in for it. There's Jeff Thomas. Oh, a bit of pushing and shoving. Oh, a bit of kicking as well. That wasn't so clever, Jeff Thomas. Thomas battling away in there. Young's in there. Often I imagine yes has come back to do some defending to add a bit of height to that Chelsea rear guard. Roger Curling, a good one in there. And it wasn't far away either. It's an excellent free kick. Coleman almost got on the end of it. What a good free kick this was. Always inviting the forwards to get in there. Coleman did just that, but it went wide. It's a goal kick. Oh, Townsend did well. Let that run. And he outwitted Jeff Thomas for a moment there. Here's Eddie Newton. Donaghy linking up well. Watts getting back and doing some good work. It comes through to Donaghy again. There's his shot. Pushed away by Martin because the corner's been given. It's two shots on the uh, goal that Donick has had in this first half. Steve Clark. Plenty of blue shirts in there. 
Young getting it away. Barry. His nerve held as the half time whistle goes. Well, a cup tie that certainly has lost something in the conditions so far as pure skill is concerned. But the bizarre and the exciting have certainly been a part of this evening so far at Selhurst Park. And at half time, although Chelsea perhaps have held the bulk of the play, they are behind. It's Crystal Palace 2, Chelsea 1. back to Selhurst Park, quarter-final of the Coca-Cola Cup and Crystal Palace leading Chelsea by two goals to one Throw for Palace, Simon Roger with it the 18-year-old from Camberwell, George Endar, his goal is what's given Palace the lead Chelsea though with a pretty good away record there's still plenty left in their locker you can be sure of that not only at Norwich, Liverpool and Arsenal this season of uh, Chelsea and they've chalked up excellent away wins at Aston Villa, at Manchester City at Coventry and at Everton and at Tottenham Lee spreading it wide here towards Mons now by Humphrey taking the ball back on floating that cross to the far side where Stewart's coming in quickly and that's where there could be problems for Crystal Palace Liam Stewart is the man who could cause real problems certainly there's some pretty sketchy defending there by uh, Crystal Palace but they got away with it Thomas brought down by Newton, a free kick. Thomas up to Coleman. Ender getting it back again for Thomas. Floated in there, but. Donaghy getting it away, Thomas once again looking and this time finding Grant Watts, he showed too much of that to Myers but they still got away with it as Humphrey turns it in Endar on the far side Roger coming in as well, just clipping it in, and it's another one, and this time Grant Watts has made it 3-1 well first the 18 year old striker scores and now the 19 year old does the same Grant Watts makes it 3-1 for Crystal Palace again some pretty shoddy defending by Chelsea and a good cross in there by Simon Roger excellent and uh, as Watts fell so he scored over Lee's head didn't hit it quite as he meant it but it found the corner of the net Chelsea throw this time. Not from the Channel Islands. Thorne gets in there. In fact, he was impeded as he tried to make that a clearance by uh, Robert Fleck, number eight. Another Palace free kick. A Goldrick. Excellent sweeping job again tonight for Crystal Palace with the free kick for them. Eric Young dancing about on the edge of the box, but it's aimed more towards Chris Coleman. Hits Clock in trouble! And then gets it at the second attempt. The flag I think was up for a free kick. Lasso with the header, knocked it down well for Fleck. Thorns after him, can Fleck finish it off? 
Well, Nigel Martin grabbed it at the second attempt. A difficult surface this for goalkeepers, and uh, that really proved the point. But also it proved the difference that Lasso just might make to Chelsea. Got flecking beautifully there, did Lasso, holding off Fawn. And he needed two goes at it. Townsend to Sinclair. Thorne winning that well in the air above uh, Fleck and a good save again but Fleck almost finished it off Nigel Martin doing well uh, from Mal Donaghy's shot I thought for a moment Fleck might just knock the rebound in Donaghy caught that really well pushed away and then saved by his feet in the end by Nigel Martin What's looking forward? Donaghy conceding the throw. Barry leaving it for Humphrey. And they're still leading 3 1. Grant Watts, a little floater in. The flag is up here. Came off the crossbar from Chris Coleman's header. Was up. Oh, good ball in there, Watts. Just flicking off the top of the crossbar. Young jumping over Harford, conceding the free kick to Chelsea. Townsend again. Chelsea forcing themselves forward. Harford now looking for something on the turn here, possibly. There's his shot. Bouncing awkwardly there for Nigel Martin and fisting it away for another corner. There's more pressure now on Crystal Palace. Coleman's gone back. To mark up David Lee at the near post. Harford is one they'll have to watch as well. In the end, it's Simon Roger who gets it away. But Donaghy playing it forward again. Harford shot just bounced awkward you can see how much it appeared at any rate to gather pace I know it can't do that but it looked as though it did Martin got down the ricochets ended up with a free kick being awarded and it's with Spencer now for Chelsea oh and he's almost got Clark in and kicked away oh the Conditions rob Chelsea of a second goal there. What an amazing sense of situation again. Good work there by Spencer and by Clark. And in the end, it's the big boot of Eric Young that brings it away because the mud hit the ball up. And the head of that time from Sinclair. Saved by Martin. says something for the game and for the support of these two clubs that in these atrocious conditions it's a real big crowd here again at Selhurst Park Coleman Roger Townsend for Chelsea finds Lee Newton up alongside him Spencer just ahead of him almost played his man in there and with a weak clearance goes straight to Lasso. Time Andy Thorne puts it over his own crossbar for the corner. Real pressure on these Palace defenders now. Now reach the last five minutes as Graham Lasso takes the corner for Chelsea. Another good shot again save once more by Martin but in fact there was an infringement and Palace don't have to face a corner they get a free kick instead I think it was Mick Harford may have strayed offside great save 
Lowry. Chip that goes straight to Kevin Hitchcock. David Lee with a chance, and Goldry did superbly there for Palace to block that one, but Lee's not finished yet, his strength and his skill taking him through, David Lee with a chance now for Chelsea, he chips it back in and Humphrey gets it away, and now he's uh, off the field and offside, but that was some terrific stuff there by David Lee, a lot of skill, and it looked for a moment as though he had rounded Nigel Martin, with an opportunity of planting the ball in the back of the net to bring Chelsea right back into it. Skill and strength here in equal proportions. Then he goes around Martin, has to go just a little too wide and then chips it back and it's headed away by Humphrey. Lee, good turn there. Outwitting a, a goal at that time. No foul. Lee tried to pick it up again. Ender. Well, Barry who got it away in the end for Palace it's just one long slog out there now as Chelsea come forward again this time with Spencer now for Lee it's time for Newton for Lee again for Townsend onto the left foot and it's back for Martin and we're in time added on at the end of 90 minutes Martin, not the time for taking uh, any risks, and it's all over, and Crystal Palace go into the semi-finals of the Coca-Cola Cup, on a night when they've looked for their young players, and their young players have responded superbly, 18-year-old George Ender with a goal, and 19-year-old Grant Watts who was substituted with another one, and uh, Chris Coleman having scored right at the start, a bizarre goal for Crystal Palace, Andy Townsend having responded for Chelsea who had so much of the game with Palace defending so well with Eddie McGoldrick, the key to so much as the sweeper but heroes all around him at Selhurst Park meaning that Palace go into the semi-finals of the Coca-Cola Cup. The final score then here at Selhurst Park and it's still raining by the way and raining hard it's Crystal Palace 3, Chelsea 1 well, Jeff Thomas, the match was in doubt uh, up until about half an hour before. You must feel the referee made the right decision, though. I think uh, we played a part in influencing the ref. We went out there and did a few kicks about, you know, on the ball. We saw the ball was running quite well on the surface. The conditions, though, did play a part in, uh, in your first goal anyway. Yeah, it was the first back pass of the game. And um, as you see, Chris Coleman's just gone in for a 50-50 with the keeper. And... Uh, well, he's got the ball before him. It's just made over the line. He was celebrating before the ball even crossed the line here. Quite fortunate, really. And you scored then, I think, what, eight minutes before half-time, the second, with, I think, really, your only, only your second shot of the of the half. Well, we've been doing this the uh, last couple of weeks. We've been getting results without really dominating games. But this is probably our first set-piece into the box. Big fella's done well to get the ball back. And George, his first goal as well. Pleased for him. Great goal. A great moment for him, and the, yeah. and the teenagers did you proud, didn't they? Because three minutes into the second half, another one, another teenager gets you that, that all important third goal at that stage. Yeah, uh, another youngster getting a good ball in. Good finish, you know, he's kept his head, he's kept his eye on the ball, and he's just whacked it in. He scored one against Liverpool, he's done it again tonight? Yeah, two games, two goals, can't, can't ask for more. Steve, after Saturday and at Hartlepool, that performance and the result must have given you a lot of satisfaction. Yeah, it did. I think there was a few things said about the team after Sutley's game at Hartlepool which uh, didn't ring true and uh, weren't very flattering for Crystal Palace and I hope tonight that we've uh, put a few things to right. Um, it was a performance with great character. We had a, a few last-minute uh, injury problems. Uh, Richard Shaw like a broken rib in training, so uh, we made adjustments. The young kids came in again and, and played superbly well and uh, it, was, it was a good result for us. And those young kids have come in, and, and a lot of them playing in an atmosphere they've probably never known before. <coughs> yeah, um, certainly Grant, I think his last game actually was the previous round against Liverpool. Because of uh, the Christmas period and cancellations with the reserve games and what have you, he hasn't, he hasn't played. 
So, you know, everyone was delighted when he got the third one. He just gave us that little vital cushion. Um, we could breathe a little bit more easily, especially the way some of the balls were flying around the box in the last 15 minutes. Before the game, the referee was very dubious about the match going ahead in the first place. With hindsight, having played the match, how do you feel now about the conditions? Yeah, it's the same. Like a Hartley pool, I thought that get, the pitch there was fit to play. I thought tonight was fit to play. It's, it's ruined the pitch for the next two weeks, uh, two months rather. Um, it, it, it's damaged the pitch an awful lot, but it was fit, definitely. Gabriel Clark reporting. Steve Koppel, a happy man, and I think he's got a fair point, uh, Bill Wyman, another happy man, a Crystal Palace fan. They uh, really rose above the conditions tonight, didn't they, both teams? Yeah, Nigel Martin was uh, extraordinary tonight, I thought, and the youngsters were great, and everybody else just stuck to it. All the, all the regular players, like McGoldrick, and that played great, but I really was impressed by the youngsters. Would you have liked to have been there? Yes, I would. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> I know. I wouldn't let you go. Um, Dave Bassett. Let's have a look at the action. The first goal, um, it was a strange one because it didn't really look as though it was going to go, did it? No, well it started up the other end of the field and uh, it was a long ball, Sinclair was favourite for it and you've got to give the boy Coleman credit, he's chased 30 yards on a sort of lost cause, he's got there and there's been hesitancy between Sinclair and uh, the goalkeeper and he's got a touch and the ball's rolled in and uh, sat agonisingly over the line, you can see there's a good distance there, the keeper's got time to come and kick it, he's anticipated that it's going to come through and really Chelsea have been called out by the conditions in the first part of the game. But you saw the difference between Fleck actually up the other end of the field who had a chance to close McColdrick down, let him through, it was appealing, a long ball forward and then Coleman chasing the lost cause. Well, Nigel Martin had a great game as Bill said. Yeah, this is a good ball in, it's a good header there and uh, his reflexes, it's in a good position for him but he knocks the ball away powerfully and uh, it's an important save for Palace, uh, particularly as they've just gone one up at that stage. Uh, there was a muffled scream down in the newsroom uh, from the Bill Wyman corner when this happened but it was a great <laughs> goal from Mr Townsend. Yeah, he picks up a loose ball, he's looking to pass the ball, sees nothing's on and then he decides he's going to go for goal and he's very positive, he surges through, he's gone past two players and he's hit a tremendous shot in those conditions and Martin has no chance. An excellent goal. You can see again here, he's now taking on McCaldrick. He's opened up the gaps there. Palace players are through. They're apprehensive. He shoots and that's a fine finish, as I say. Best goal of the game, wasn't it? Yeah, excellent really. goal, yeah. That was magnanimous of you, Bill. But, oh, uh, but it was. It was. You said the youngsters had a good night and uh, George Ender, one of them. As Jeff Thomas said, this is one of their first free kicks. Uh, Eric Young gets a good touch on against Mickey Harford here. And David Lee, I think, thinks it's going out. Andy Thorne, again, with that lost cause, knocks it back across the goal. Really, to be fair, the goalkeeper, in my opinion, should have done better. And the youngsters on hand to place it in. And that was uh, Palace's second goal from their second effort at goal. Your you thoughts, Bill? When yeah, you saw I was this surprised to see Thorne up there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't say any more. I just thought all the youngsters played great tonight. They really, you know, we needed them because we've got a lot of injuries and people out and uh, they've come great in the last few days. Well, that was an 18-year-old. A 19-year-old, Grant Watts, got on the act here with the third. Well, he'd started the move with the cross, in actual fact, and the ball's gone out and the ball's played back in and uh, David Lee and uh, Donachy have got to be disappointed that he's got between the two of them and finished. But it's an excellent finish. The keeper's coming back across the goal and he's put it in the other corner and very good finish for a young lad. So, Dave, um, we said before the match that uh, it would be fascinating to see how the two captains got on tonight, Jeff Thomas and Andy Townsend. I think we can have a look now at um, a part of what went on between those two uh, any minute now. The love scene, wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a competitive game, and Andy had been in a tackle early on, uh, an involvement here, and you can see that incident there. He's come away with the ball, and there's no great problem there. Andy's got up, and there's a few bodies. Oh, he's shown great skill there. Chelsea have thrown themselves in and he's done very, very well, Jeff Thomas there. Yeah, he's getting back to his old game, hasn't he? That's right. Well, he's been out for a while and uh, he was aggressive tonight and he was competitive and he's done well. And this is the incident where Andy goes across and Jeff Thomas has got the ball and Andy blocks him off uh, and Jeff's got a bit, uh, you know, his handbag, he's lost his uh, toy out of his pram and they've just <laughs> squared up to one another. Nothing wrong, the referee's done well in the conditions, it's a cup tie, he's booked them and both Andy and uh, Jeff have got on with it.
Yeah, they did uh, well to get away, I suppose, up with uh, any form of discipline there, really. Well, he, he gave them a yellow card, and that was OK. I mean, it wasn't a sending off offence. It's an emotional game. You know, they've not injured one another. You know, you're going to get the odd incident in a cup tie. It means a lot to the teams. Chelsea want to get through to the semi-final, Palace do, and you're going to get one or two tackles going about. It's part and parcel of the English game, you know. What's wrong with a tackle? You know, people in this game at the moment want to stop tackling, and that was one of the facets of the English game. That was a great cup tie tonight. There was some good skill shown at times by individuals and uh, it was a good atmosphere all round and uh, obviously Chelsea would be disappointed with their performance but to me, uh, overall for a neutral, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Bill, you were obviously disappointed after Saturday's result but the team came back well tonight. Yeah, they do come back after a disaster. They did against Liverpool a couple of months ago and uh, they did it again. And uh, probably the same kind of... It wasn't the same kind of conditions but it was very difficult conditions to deal with and uh, I was very proud of them tonight. But you pointed out something quite interesting about that goalkeeper, didn't you? Well, it was interesting from the highlights there. The Chelsea goalkeeper didn't have a save to make. There was well, th three goals went in, and there was one that went wide. Whereas Nigel Martin had 12 efforts at his goal. Nine were on target, and he had to make nine saves. So Chelsea had a large proportion of that game. But uh, it, Kevin Hitchcock would probably be a little bit disappointed uh, you know, that he actually didn't have a save to make, and the ball ended up in his net three times. Would you describe it, Bill, as an up and down day for you? I mean, it's the day you announced your split from the Stones, uh, and yet your team has won. No, but I don't think of that as a bad thing. I don't feel sad. I feel sad in a way, but I don't think of it as a down. It's a, a, a going on into something else. So it's been an up and an up day.